Good Monday, Cup of Sales Joe. Have you ever heard of a minimalist or the minimalist movement? There's been a lot of buzz around this concept for the last few years. Essentially, it is paring your life down to the basics that you need and avoiding the clutter, both physically and mentally, that we sometimes get lost in. The theory is that having a more minimal, clear environment will elicit a more clear and unencumbered mental state. And it makes sense that if we are surrounded by clutter physically, then it is harder to have even mental clarity. And I think maybe if I had to guess, this all started around the time that Marie Kondo had a show about how to clean your closet and your surroundings. I think it was on Netflix. She's a Japanese organizational expert and has a fundamental principle, which is, if something does not bring you peace or joy or happiness, then get rid of it. The old adage probably applies here. You can't soar like an eagle when you're surrounded by turkeys. I've always had a bit of resistance to this idea of minimalism because I like my things. I like some of the luxuries of modern life, like having a good coffee maker in my kitchen or other things that maybe wouldn't fit into a minimalist lifestyle. But I also understand the allure. Having a clean desk or office, a clean kitchen or living room. I mean, what would you think if you walked into a hotel room and it was cluttered? We like the idea of clean and clear sometimes, don't we? Especially when it comes to our mind. Yes, I do believe in the principles of minimalism when it comes to our work. Mainly because it frees us to do work at our best. Despite the continual encouragement to and belief that we can... Multitasking isn't something that produces our best work. Now, if we have to just get it done and it is a low mental activity, then we can do multiple things at once. I mean, we don't need to stop to think about talking and driving at the same time because they are both things that require minimal mental engagement or deep thinking. But when you're looking for an address or need to focus to see something while driving, do you turn your radio down? (laughs) My point is... Minimalism, when it comes to good, deep work, is a very good thing. There is power in simplicity. I've talked multiple times before about white space. This is the idea of allowing ourselves to gain or maintain focus by not trying to accomplish more in our minds, but to place our attention on one single thing, giving that task, project, or activity its own space. This does two things. It places it properly in our mental bandwidth, which is deeper than the usual things we encounter, and it gives space for things to happen, such as connection, creativity, and perhaps most importantly, active listening and being attentive. This requires space and time and a mind that is not cluttered. We can interpret this as higher focus, not being distracted, or deep work. But overall, it is a skill that we should indulge in as often as we can. But we need to know how to do it and what will happen when we do. You may have already noticed the musical inspiration I'm using today. If you are not familiar, it is Brothers in Arms from the band Dire Straits. I can remember the very first time I heard it, and it still impacts me the same as it did back then. It was released in the late 70s, and it it does impact us through what I would call musical minimalism. Given the serious tone of the lyrics in the song, It actually communicates and connects with us, the listener, more effectively with less instruments or complexity. Every instrument, sound, and lyric is given its own space and has its own dynamic. The result is a compelling work that, more than most songs I know of, communicates emotion without anything getting in the way. While I'm just using small bits of it here, give the entire song a listen sometime, and you will learn the impact of this minimalist approach. 
So what does this mean in our work? I know for myself, I like to think that I am a driven person. Maybe even a type A personality. Okay, maybe A minus. <laughs> but what ideas does that conjure up in your mind? Activity, energy, the hustle culture, as we call it. The idea is that nothing happens unless I make it happen. I am in control and I have the ability, opportunity, and ambition to be successful. I love that approach, but I think in some ways it can also be something we overdose on. If nothing happens unless I make it happen, then when do the wonderful, surprising, random, and unexpected things happen that makes life more interesting? This is where I believe a bit of minimalism can be a great complement to our ambitions and our goal-driven mindsets. Let me ask you this. Put these four things in order of importance in your work mindset. Purpose, energy, attentiveness, and connection. I know your immediate answer may be, they're all important, but we just talked about how we are better in most cases to have a singular focus or place of focus. Just like when we are selling or doing a business meeting for a client or customer, it is very easy for us to overwhelm them with data and it all can become noise. But aren't there always one or two things that a customer will hone in on or that we can be most impactful with and actually create good business discussion and increase connection? Similarly, where do we put our focus and attention in our own work? What I hope you have thought through is that these all manifest themselves in various ways and they really need to work together. It's where we sometimes don't use these in the optimal mix that creates situations where we have mental clutter, where we try to do everything all at once. So let's see where these apply optimally each and how to get ourselves to do this consistently. The power of simplicity and space giving room, knowing more, but allowing yourself minimal control, but having an unmistakable purpose. Sometimes we confuse power with control. We try to control everything, but the beauty is sometimes in the organic and when we give space for new things to bloom and the art of subtlety. I know for me, I sometimes go into meetings wanting to prove myself or prove something. I know my purpose, and regardless of anything else, I am going to accomplish it, which is laudable. But sometimes that translates into taking control. That I am the only one who can drive things. I'm driving the bus, and everyone else is just a passenger. Have you had meetings like that? Maybe even where you talk more than your colleagues or customers or clients? In fact, I think as we as salespeople relish those opportunities. But is it really accomplishing what we think it is? What happens if we are willing to give up control but maintain our purpose? Especially when we are selling. This is a key distinction. Have you ever tried a minimal touch? A minimal approach. Maybe we bring the bus and open and let everyone in, but if they want to drive, why not let them and we become a passenger for a bit? Maybe enjoy going somewhere unexpected and paying attention to the ride they take us on. I've actually been playing with this idea in my own meetings, and it is interesting how much more I am learning and finding out. Things that I may have missed had I not allowed myself to take a more minimal approach and allow space for good and sometimes bad things to happen. Brothers and I. Why 
don't we do this more often? I'll just answer for myself. Fear and lack of trust. If I feel like I am the one with the answers and the answer is my product or service, then I don't believe that my potential client or customer can get there without me. Not only that, but me continually placing it in front of them, stating why, and flooding them with great stuff. I mean, isn't that in some instances our purpose? To ensure that they know we are the best? I mean, how else will they understand? I have to laugh a bit because this approach, which I am guilty of, assumes two things. First, that they cannot get there on their own or make a good decision on their own. And secondly, that I have to earn this result. I have to sell. It's in our job description, at least part of it, right? But is that always the best way to do it? Instead of being Brad Pitt, I'm okay with being Casey Affleck. Instead of being Meryl Streep, it's being okay with being Laura Dern. Sometimes we are the reason that a client grows their business or moves to work with us. But sometimes I think, and I know I am guilty of, working way too hard trying to sell too much. And instead, should just let things happen naturally as they should. I don't know about you. But when I approach work this way, it does help me to let go of a certain tension, a mental weight that I carry. We can have great purpose and drive, but part of the art of working with people is that they also have their purpose and drive. And if we are too concerned with our own and don't leave space for them to show theirs, which is essential to find connection, then we may be missing something. A more minimal approach can be very helpful here. It can speak more than an onslaught of ideas and reasons. And there is beauty in the connection we can find. I hope you have a great week. Oh, oh, hold on. If you would like to know more about this topic, how to develop a minimalist approach to our work, then check out another cup on Cup of Sales Joe on YouTube.